So here we are, and we, uh, we come from a wide range of experiences and backgrounds, and we're just launching forward in a, a common endeavor. And I, I just want to begin with the idea that, that learning is really community-based. It's like Robert said, it's hard to do anything by yourself. You do things with others in different ways, or related in different ways. And so we're really launching forward here. And so I, I, one of the things I'm trying to do in this presentation is to indicate that aspect of education is an activity of the universe. So we are, we're joining something that's already going on. That's the basic idea. That's my invitation, so that you'll hear from uh, different people each week, uh, and we have a lot in common. We, we all um, are excited by a number of things that are similar. We also have a lot of differences that are equally important. So various things I say will um, we'll touch upon other things you'll hear, but some of them will be different and even contradictory. Just want to prepare you. And so it's a way, it's a way of entering into a conversation with us, those of us in the room, with the others in the, uh, the PCC program, with the others in CIS, and, and then with the great gathering of, of souls through history that we have in books, it's amazing. So, um, like Robert said, I wanted to start with the big picture. So, what we, um, what we know about the universe, I regard as enormously precious knowledge that required all 200,000 years of human existence to obtain. It, it isn't the property of current scientists. They, all of them uh, rely upon thinkers and institutions that go back all the way to the end of the myths of our, of our origin. So this, this, um, this knowledge I'm going to just hand out here has to be regarded as our birthright. It, it's something that we as a species have been trying to get um, clear. Now, we, there, are, there are difficulties in hearing this knowledge. One of them is that we live in a society that has uh, tensions and, and even a split between its spiritual traditions and the scientific tradition. And uh, this is most unfortunate because then um, science is, the scientific knowledge then is, um, is seen by many spiritual people as a threat, as a, a demolishing force even. As well, even by people that are um, um, <clears throat> more so spiritually sophisticated, they will see science as a lesser form of knowledge. And so that they, the psyche that we are, that, that hears the knowledge, deforms it as it comes in, and then it ends up saying, this is just a physical. This is just about matter. This is just about material. And so then it, it saves them the effort of actually learning about the universe. Because then I can return to this sacred book or, the, or, the, or this sacred thinker and then learn the real truth. You see, so we have this, we have this split in our, in our society which shows up in a what I'm calling a, a damaged, wounded, and deformed um, psyche. All of us. I mean, I've been at this forever, and I, I'm constantly aware of it surfacing to me. <clears throat> so, um, one way to think of this is that, um, as I just sort of lay out some facts, uh, We just hear these as, as our current best guess as to what's going on 
in the universe, where we are, and what's happening. Guess is too strong a word. Um, Plato said it's a likely story. So cosmology is a likely story. So the likely part, that adverb, is important. It's likely because we've put in millions of years of human consciousness into this study, this investigation. And no one is, is more aware of the tentative nature of scientific knowledge than those scientists that are actually arriving at it. So, here we go. We, uh, wow, we look around and um, we're, um, we're in the world and we have this, this recognition that we're standing on something. We give it a name, Earth. People had different ideas about Earth. Right? It's a, it's a platform. It's unmoving. It's that early, early ideas about this. Well, it certainly is a platform. But in fact, it is moving. That was an amazing discovery. It's moving. Like, wow. We went from fixed ground to the whole thing is flying. Now, not everybody has made that change. So that we have, there are 7 billion humans, and there are probably 7 billion different kinds of human consciousness, and they're all existing on different levels of understanding. All of us. So, um, that insight that, that the Earth is solid ground, unmoving, there's some truth there, and um, many people live there and haven't budged an inch. So, but, um, but early on, reflective humans realized it's actually a ball. And you, see, you have a horizon, and, and you, you watch there at sea, and you see a ship, and it kind of disappears. And we got to the idea of it being a ball, I, for me, like way back. And um, so now we have some notions about some other uh, heavenly beings, like the sun. So the sun, long ways away. Okay, how far away is it? Well, the uh, Greeks, some of the Greeks thought it was, it was about the size of a of a, of a, a warrior's shield, a big warrior's shield. So it's just like you know, kind of a little bit over there. Uh, so the sun turns out to be a, a million times the size of Earth. No. It is the massive presence of our lives. Uh, one, of the, one of the great challenges of, of the human group, and it will, it will impinge upon, really, uh, your graduate studies from beginning to end, is this. Moving from knowing about something to becoming a person who lives according to that knowledge. There, there's a big split going from like, you, we have knowledge to living in a way that's congruent with the knowledge. The, the amazing fact is that, that, that planet Earth is um, withering, life is withering, every ecosystem on the planet is withering because we won't live according to what we know. We, we know how to live in a way that would actually be an enhancement to life systems. The knowledge is there. We don't do it because of that gap. So that gap is something we want to pay attention to in our culture as a whole, in ourselves in particular. <clears throat> one, way to, one way for you to uh, keep in mind would be your own direction of spiritual development or educational growth is to notice the, the ways in which <coughs> there's a gap between uh, what you wish for and, and, and who you are. The, um, we generate frustrations in our lives by the way in which we live. I'm talking massively in terms of the planet as a whole and individually. We generate frustrations and misery. It's amazing. And uh, by paying attention to that gap, we can begin to get an 
insight into what are the forms of consciousness that we embody that need transformation. I will return to this at the end of my lecture. But I wanted to just lift it up right now. All right, so the sun, um, oh, it's a million times the size of Earth. And it has this, this amazing capacity. It transforms matter into light. It transforms matter into light. I mean, that's pretty impressive. We didn't know about this. We had no idea what was going on with the sun until 1950. Just imagine, we've been humans for 200,000 years, and we didn't know where the energy was coming from. Now, I'm not saying this because I want to criticize past humans. But I'm saying this because I want to empower us. We have to realize that lots, 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 and lots of stuff is yet to be learned. I think, and I did a calculation one time, that the total knowledge that's available in the universe, that we will one day know, uh, is out there, and we, with all of science, have so far learned one billionth of one billionth of one percent of it. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. <laughs> yes, how could you possibly do that calculation? How could you possibly figure out how much knowledge there is out there? But I'm just, I'm just trying to say that when you look back over human history, it's astounding how much we've learned. And it's astounding how much we don't know right now. It's astounding. So just remember that.